Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Let me make sure we got this all working correctly. Didn't have any problems last time, so that was good. We just want to make sure. Want to make sure we got everything all set up. Um, it looks like I'm a little bit in the way of the miners logo on the screen here. I'll go ahead and fix that. Whoa, look at this trippy setup here. Let's see. Hopefully that'll fix it. I've got the actual live stream here on my phone right now, so just making sure that's all set. I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good, folks. Uh, what is going on, everybody? This is Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jada Sports Dude, coming to you all live from my apartment. Hopefully you all are staying at your homes as well, practicing social distancing and staying safe during this pandemic and I'm here to provide y'all with a little bit of extra entertainment that is right folks it is time for game number two of last season's games for New Mexico State we're going back and watching every single one of them or at least for the most part all of them whichever ones are here on YouTube that we can watch thanks to NM State Aggie Athletics Archives which is they have their own YouTube channel go ahead and make sure to check that out that's where I'm finding all of these full games and without them I wouldn't be able to do this so shout out to them but yeah, this is game number two. We watched the Aggies earn a convincing win over Western New Mexico last night. And we are here now for the first road game of the season in a rivalry matchup against UTEP. I actually was at this game. This was the first time I traveled. Uh, it's going to be about an hour and 10 minute long video. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, folks. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, let's make sure that we have all the volume good. Yvonne will jump center for New Mexico Hopefully State. Hopefully you guys Grayson can hear Williams. that. Hopefully um, we'll do the honors my voice isn't too loud. And in the interest of loud enough. Uh, time and getting it right, so, we will... Go ahead, guys. Let well, me know if the game to, audio uh, needs to be raised. Yeah, if I'm going to talk Yvonne. a little bit louder Let's or not as loud. Let me know if I'm still in the gesture right now. We're still trying to figure it's that out. It's just too difficult to say on the fly. Um, but yeah. Well, normally I can conquer them all, but that one has got me beat. Actually, it'll be uh, Trayvon and Queen to jump center of the off the slide against up. Bryce and Williams. Gives a couple of inches to the minor. Oh, okay, I'm back. Man. Yeah, but he's got some hops. All right. And already, Darren George is lecturing both teams. So Trev is jumping again. Is that something he's been all season? Because for some reason, I don't know that. Each other. They've worked out together. I don't know why I don't know. All right, that. here we go. Ball's in the air. We're underway as Bryson Williams wins the tap. The Miners will possess first, and here comes Jordan Miners Lathan. With the ball. We got yeah, Jordan Lathan. Man -to -man Buchanan. Guarding Lathan right away. side. Jordan Williams, or Bryson Williams attacks the window. I want to say it's a Southern. And it's taken southern by the miss? Aggies. I'm not sure. Bryson, or rather T.J. Bobbitt. Now to Queen, out front to Buchanan. Maybe. Right side, Terrell Brown. Brown. Out front to Bobbitt, left side Buchanan. So this now was a game with the Aggies. Queen to the goal, crosses and over, comes baseline and pivots. Out front uh, now to Terrell Crazy Brown environment though, I will say that. I really right like uh, UTEP Bobbitt. Stadium. Bobbitt with six left on the Good shot job. clock to Queen. Jump stop a little faded by right Trev. Jumper Can't rolls around, throwing it off. And the rebound fumbled by Eric Miller. The Aggies will get it back. Stuff now to Buchanan, right now. left side Terrell Brown, back to Buchanan. So this right here, we got Terrell with the ball. Left he was not at full strength for this one. He was still trying to recover from a groin injury that was really bothering him all season. So this is not him at full strength. Wait, let me pause this really quick. There I am, folks, uh, right behind the ref on the score table, right to the left of the referee in the black shirt. Just want to point that out. That's where I'm at right there. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Terrell was not a full strength for this one. He had missed the Western New Mexico game and was a game time decision for this one. He said after the Arizona game that he felt he was at, I think he said about 80, and that was way later down the line, so I can't imagine how he was feeling on this one. I'd imagine it was maybe like 50 tops. He did not look like his old self. Kutsia. All right, it comes left side, Terrell Brown in the corner. He's double teamed. Now out front to Yvonne, to Terrell Brown. Brown drives into the lane. You can just see his explosiveness. He's not the same in this it's one. It's knocked away from Bryson Williams and a foul, and it's going to go against the Aggies. And it's going to go against Treble and Queen. Number 21, so there's Queen. our first foul, foul of the contest. The Aggies. And the Miners will come to attack a minute 48 in, leading 2-0 is Jordan Lathan starts up the floor. 
Blayton with the ball here. He had a really good game over, in this one. Watch by Buchanan out front. Uh, really Bryson Williams turns to face, comes to the dribble, backs out on Yvonne. Now one on one right side, spins, comes into the lane. Games, drop it now to Lathan. Lathan nearly two minutes gone. Love. Comes around a Bryson Williams pick down the middle. He give it go to Bryson Williams. He makes it up yeah. and he scores. Beautiful. Bryson Such a beast. Lathan to Williams. You'll hear a lot of that. They had a lot of guys transferred. Williams was not one of them. He's coming back. But they lost a lot of guys. Man. They lost Kaden Archie. They lost Jordan Lathan. Um, I forget the, the rest of them, but they lost a good amount. Terrell Brown, we've got a foul going against Lathan. The Miners have not been strong coming down with a rebound thus far. The Aggies have reached this three separate times and knocked the ball away. We're not the Miners right now. And Lathan was forced to commit a foul. You've got to be stronger with the basketball. I'm going to try to pull up the, uh, the box score like what I did with the last game just as a refresher. Because a lot of this is just Buchanan off my memory. I haven't right watched way. this film since, pretty much since right after the game was over. I like to go Queen back and watch the film for the most recent game, the but line. after that, Doesn't I don't go, really go back to it much. Rebound taken by Queen, and Queen scores. And a little floater there by Trev. Miners getting up a lot of opportunities on the offensive end. Took the Aggies three minutes to get on the board. They trail 4-2. Here's okay, Lathan with it out front. Lathan working against Buchanan around a pick by Williams pulls up fires and he hits another. Two That's what I remember the most about this lane. game is Lathan's mid range. Mid -range. Miners up was just six to two. ridiculous. Like, it, it looked like every single one of those round. Now to Ivan above the foul line bounces out front Buchanan. Buchanan comes right side. I want to say this is this was junior season. Vila. Villa now to Lathan front court. Lathan throws one down the middle. It's a wild pass and mid court Edwards comes up with it. Miners are lucky they didn't turn it over. Sule boom right side, pulls up, shoots a three, way off target, missed the iron, taken off the window by Yvonne. Front court, it comes right side now to Buchanan. Buchanan across the way, bounces in low Yvonne, right of the lane. Yvonne to the dribble, baseline Yvonne drops, step turns, now throws turns one up, left hand no is short. The rebound is chased down by Bryson Williams, and it's loose, it goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Aggies. Yeah, I remember the before the start of the season, um, I went in and I put out my predictions for the whole, whole year to their schedule, what I felt like their win-loss record would be, and, um, and I had said they would split with Utah. I remember I got a lot of people on Twitter, on Facebook, calling me a clown, calling me this and that, but I don't know anything about basketball. I think a lot of people right, were underestimating this Queen, UTEP team. Now, obviously, the, the, uh, the Aggies went on to beat UTEP five, once they were fully healthy. Um, so that definitely played a really big factor. But this Utah, UTEP team had a really good NBA roster. Right, here's Edwards, Edwards, right Edwards, I think, Edwards is a really good point guard out of LSU. Bryson Williams, so versatile. He can hit the three, go to work down low. Jordan Lathan, so he blew. This is a really good squad. Then of course they went on to have all these problems with the team and guys transferring out. But right around now, like this is only the second game, but I feel like right around now this was where they were at their best all season. Honestly. And the opener against New Mexico Highlands, six nine sophomore from Houston checks in, and out goes Villa. Darrell Edwards missed the second foul shot. Bobbitt clears, and out of Buchanan. Aggies down by a deuce, nearly five minutes gone as Buchanan starts up and crosses over. Buchanan around a pick by Terrell Brown. Yeah, they didn't get the start side. again, as we said, because um, AJ Harris is injured. There's Terrell, got it to fall. Props to Terrell, man, for gunning it out. He did not have to play this early, right, like he could have easily, Lathan. with the strain growing, those things longer, they can get right re-aggravated, like he could have easily been out for most of non-conference play, but I think we kind of knew that with AJ gone, the, uh, the backcourt just needed, in, the ball taken away by needed Buchanan, some leadership, you know, and they're going to call it a two-shot foul, saying that Williams... Not that Sean Buchanan doesn't provide that or anything like that, but First it's a different kind of leadership, you know, somebody they can get the ball and to and score. And Sean's Shoot more of a facilitator. 
to him, and props to him for going out and playing, even though he was not anywhere close to 100%. Two early fouls that limited him to five minutes in the first half. Makes the first one, and we're not at eight. Sean Williams, the East Carolina transfer, 6'1", junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, checks in. Williams, an outstanding talent. Next free throw. Six games, 40 oh, starts in two seasons for the Pirates as Williams missed the second foul shot. And he averaged over 12 a game in both years for East Carolina. Rookie of the year in that conference. Yep, tight. that's right, as a freshman. Left side, C.J. Bobbitt yeah, shoots an air ball yeah. three. Queen throws it off of Lee. Yeah, I remember him putting up a lot of shots in this game from three. Are slow to every but C.J. has a stretch big. But, every shot. you know, like, shots like that, those aren't good looks for him. Lathan leaves, Nigel Hawkins. He had a couple in the corner, too. They were actually better looks, but it just it wasn't dropping for him. I don't know what he shot this game. Nigel is from Houston. All right, it comes into Bobbitt. He missed the left-hand runner in the lane, but chases down his but, own uh, miss. Yeah, this was a tough game wow. for CJ. Right, right there, that's my fifth offensive rebound for the Aggies. All right, Terrell Brown, left side to Williams. One for seven from the floor in this game, yeah. eight. Right side, it comes to Terrell Brown. Brown comes toward the baseline, cut off by ODG on the wing. Here's a three. Well, like, even if he's not making those shots, it's Johnny it's Jones three. I still think it's important to at least have a big man who does stretch the floor like that. You're forcing the bigs to come out. It just provides so much more space in the paint. So even though the shots weren't falling for CJ, I think it still serves a purpose to, you know, have the defense have to respect that shot, which they did the whole way through even when he was struggling, because they know he could knock him down. It just wasn't his night. All the Aggies have five offensive rebounds. The Miners have a big goose egg in that column. Here's Sean Williams, bounces into the right corner to Bobbitt. Out front, Johnny McCann, Ooh. dribble drive, comes down the middle, all the way underneath, scoops it up, And you see, that's why... Let me just pause that right here. That's why it's so important to have a big that can shoot that three ball. Because you look at this. Essentially, there could be anybody cutting into the paint. Johnny can just put a little move and get in there. And there is nobody in the paint right now. Absolutely nobody. Because both CJ and Johnny McCants, those are two big men, that both of them can actually shoot that three ball. So they're both having to have a defender on them on the perimeter. And just so much is available right there. Like, this was a really good move by Johnny. Out front, Johnny McCants. Dribble drive comes down the middle all the way underneath. Scoops it up. And he foul. gets the foul in this Bryson case. But like, that's why it's so important that Diggs can really Cal shoot the ball. The, the, the Aggies have that. And they're going to have that again this season. Foul. Johnny's going to be really good. Um, Jacob Tryon can hit that uh, the three ball. Even Mayan Kerr will extend his range a little bit. Like, they've got some shooters, man. It's going to be really good for them. Is Older sister uh, Cameron Montano, appreciate you for tuning in, man. He says, any new news on recruiting for the Aggies? No, no new news. Sounds pretty sick. New news. Yeah, nothing right now. No updates. Uh, I'm still waiting on info. We're still waiting on the decision for Jaquan Scott. I'm still waiting on um, seeing if AJ Harris will get his extra year. Still waiting to see which guys are going to be granted immediate eligibility. There's, there's just a lot of moving pieces right now. But nothing yet. Really, the only thing I'm anticipating this week is just more info on the schedule. I was told we were going to get a little bit more info on the schedule this, this week. I don't know if that's the full schedule. Um, because we've already seen like U and M release its full schedule with the exception of I think like two or three games. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be that. Steal by Hawkins. But we will get a couple more dates set this week. So that's really the only thing I'm anticipating in terms of Aggie news. But of course, if any recruiting stuff happens, I'll make sure to spread the word. Sean Williams comes right side. Williams bounces to Rice left That's side. A nice shoots line. a three that doesn't go. The long rebound. You know who gets it. New Mexico State. They get every offensive board seemingly. Here's Queen right corner. Now to Yvonne. Back to Queen. Queen to Yvonne. Nice give and go, and he scores. Good give and go. Coming in from the right side. Yeah, early in the year, New Mexico State Beautiful. was really Bounce doing well on the offensive Queen. glass. I don't know what happened Aggies early on. They were averaging double-digit offensive boards early on, and then when Wack plays started, they weren't. For the Aggies. All right, here's Edwards with it. Edwards right side. Edwards had it slapped away. It's taken by the But I think Aggies. even in this game, this is one of their better games offensively. The Aggies have been stronger with the basketball thus far. 
Stephen M., appreciate you for tuning in, man. Uh, he says, as a journalist, can you contact Jaquan Scott directly and get the scoop? Um, I mean, I, I'm able to reach out to him, but he's, he's not going to tell me right now. You know, he's still deciding. With 11.42 left to play until halftime, the Aggies lead the Miners 13-12, to each team with two turnovers. And the Aggies already with seven second chance points. Here's Buchanan, left side attacking zone Williams. Lathan is back in. Buchanan out front to Jabari Rice. Comes around a pick by Yvonne, right wing side. Yeah, it it's really out is just like, Johnny McCants. you know, it's unless you're unless Williams. you're one of the bigger the key, guys, guys like, like Goodman or Rothstein. Um, if they if a player were to decide where he was going to go and wanted to give it to somebody like give the inside tape to somebody, they're going to give it to the guy at CBS Sports or the guy at ESPN or something like that, you know, because they can get uh, push that out to a bigger platform. So it's unfortunate that that's how it is, but it really is more of a waiting game for the, the local beats. Uh, Stephen M. Oh, okay, yeah, you're copying and pasting the thing I said. Yes, sir, yeah. I went in and I finally, uh, I finally set up an account on Aggie Alert so that I could go ahead and uh, get the message after that. So, yeah, I, I posted that a little while ago. We're not at a 13. DG, last year's Conference USA rebounding champion. Hopefully get some people to tune in. I think I saw the, uh, we got like 60 views for the live stream yesterday, which is actually really, really good. Um, anytime we get more views than the amount of subscribers we have here, like, I consider that a win. A really big win, so. so. I appreciate everybody for tuning in to that last one. Whether you guys are watching this live right now or watching it on playback, I appreciate y'all. Hopefully, hopefully y'all are staying safe out there. Um, yeah, hopefully people on Aggie Alert will go ahead and tune into this also if you are. Make sure to, uh, to comment. Let me know that you're coming from Aggie Alert. Yeah, man. I just, I just want to spread the word and bring y'all as much Aggie content as possible. I know with no sports going on, we're kind of dying for it. So. so that's what I'm trying to do here. Well, I thought so too, but they're saying no. Okay, it comes into George Lathan with ten and a half to play in the first half, tied at thirteen. Here's Lathan with it. Lathan crosses midcourt. Now to ODG. One bounce dribble to Hawkins right side. Hawkins stops his dribble. Hawkins right of the lane. ODG. ODG drives baseline, throws it left corner to Hawkins. Now on the wing to Boom. Boom pulls up, shoots a long three that's off target, and it's taken by Williams. Williams to Buchanan. Yeah, Sully was a pretty good, uh, pretty good three-point shooter from my memory. He was a little bit streaky. I don't think he had too many. I don't think he did too well in both the games against New Mexico State. But I can't remember if he's staying or not or if he's graduating. They had so many moving pieces that he kept this year. Right side, it comes out front now. So I forget. Rice has it. Rice pivots. Rice bounces. That's a beautiful pass. Shot blocked out of bounds by a recovering Nigel Hawkins to the end. Can I take like let me see sixteen oh one? Cannon left side. Look at this pass by Jabari. Williams around a pick by McCants. Williams out front to Buchanan. Shot clock at ten. Right side it comes out now. Rice has it. Like look at look at the angle he has to fit this in. You got all four guys, or all five guys for UTEP, inside the perimeter, and just delivers a beautiful pass. Rice bounces underneath to Buchanan. Shot blocked out of bounds by a recovering. That's a good recovery by Hawkins, but that is a fantastic pass by Jabari. And I'm really hoping he he takes on even more of a passing role this season because I don't want it to all just rest on Evan, you know, assuming AJ doesn't come back. I would love for Evan to, to have more opportunity shooting the ball as well. Because right now I feel like he kind of really has to shoulder the load on passing. But Jabari is definitely capable, man. Passes like that, like, that's, that's pro level passes right there. Well, you don't have to worry about offensive rebounds. You can stop for 30 seconds. 
I promise I won't pause it too much, guys. Just whenever a play stands out to me, I just want to, you know, just give you my writing thoughts on it. But that's what we're here to do, man. Just sit down and break down some, uh, some basketball. Comes toward the right wing side around a pick by ODG. Out front to Villa. Villa comes to the dribble. Left side, Edwards. Edwards with 10 on the shot clock to Villa. Villa bounces in low left of the lane. ODG. Edward Villa. ODG skips it right side. It's off the hand of Hawkins. Yeah, I remember watching the film on, was too tall. on Villa oh, being really impressed when I was trying to read this game. Foul against Jabari Rice, a pushing foul. And there's one Forget where he was coming clock, from. I mean, I, I know wow. he's... Uh, from overseas, but I don't know if he transferred from another college or not. Now the re the shot clock he definitely is did, but I'm forgetting where. The fourth team foul. They are really yeah, really talented guy. I mean, he had no chance of and actually good friends with Yvonne, too. I think there was a... Um, when UTEP women's basketball was in town. Look at that shot. When UTEP women's basketball was at the Pan Am playing the Aggies, uh, there was a, a video of Yvonne and Eric sitting in the, in the stands together just watching the game, so that's pretty cool. Because now they're both in Spain. I don't know if they're still in contact or not, but still, that's, that's pretty cool. Put in the rivalry aside. Lathan throws a bad pass and it's stolen. Strange, it's easy with steal. Got to finish Queen it. Down the middle of the rice comes underneath. He missed the scoop shot. It's taken by Villa. There were a lot of those in this Edwards. game. Here come the miners. Edwards down the middle. Just make Edwards it with shots. Look for it. Throws it away. Here's the lead. McCants two on one. McCants the distance and he scores. McCants for two. So the turnovers rear its ugly head. Miner lead is 16 to 15. Oh, turn this AC off. Edwards with it out front loud. to Villa. Villa now to Hawkins. Hawkins comes around a pick by ODG. Hawkins you see, y'all don't even know the things I do for you, man. My AC is too loud sometimes, so when I'm live streaming, I turn it off. So I'm here in Hawks. Right side, McCants. But it's all for y'all, man. It's all for y'all. <laughs> Terrell Brown, right side, McCants. McCants out front, and comes left side. To Hopefully y'all are enjoying these live streams, y'all. Whack tournament MVP, right side. I really McCants. like sitting down and watching these games. Three. It doesn't go. Lathan the rebound. Here come the Miners. Lathan with seven and a half to play. Lathan to Villa. Underneath to Hawkins. He's right under the basket. He scores with a left hand. A great pass by Eric. So up next after this one is what? Southern, I think? Right, they played the, uh, the Cougars. Here comes Terrell Brown. The Jaguars. Brown right side around the McCants pick. Attacks the window. Stops. Oh, I think that's next game back in Pan Am. I want to say it's the Jaguars. Oh, also on our YouTube channel here, I just posted an interview with Nick Gonzalez, the New Mexico State infielder, who was widely believed to be a top five pick in the MLB draft. So if you guys want to check that out, it's like a three minute video. Um, so it talks a little bit about where he might go, what he's bringing to the table. So if y'all can check that out, leave a like on it, I'd appreciate it. And if you want to read the full article about it, where I really go in depth on like his fit with some other MLB teams, uh, that's on our site, so on lcsunnews.com, make sure to check that out. And then tomorrow at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, folks, episode number five of Stray Shooter with Jabari Rice. A really, really good episode. I think it's about close to like 20 minutes long. Uh, we sat down and broke down some game film. He answered some fan questions. Um, we did a little bit of a, you know, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it. We did some other, like, another segment or two that was just really hilarious. So y'all are going to want to check that out tomorrow at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, if you guys want to get notified when it gets released here on the channel, you can subscribe and then hit the little post notification bells on the side of it. And um, you guys will get notified every time we do anything on this on this channel, whether it be these live streams, whether it be the straight shooter episodes, uh, press conferences, I'm going to be posting that kind of stuff. Also, tons and tons of good content. So, so I appreciate it if y'all keep uh, subscribing. Oh, great position. 
It's two on Yvonne and seven team oh, right. fouls. So we're going to have free throws. Yeah, the Aggies were hitting in there. It was a really and low scoring game. Urban. I remember that about this too. We'll shoot Second one and foul. one. Not a whole lot going on. And like, usually for games the like these, show that takes I really don't have anything to read yet from that article. Because like, <laughs> nothing's really happened. Like, I really just pretty much say both teams got out to a slow start. Here were the percentages. And that's about it. There's not a whole lot going on in this half. Saturday morning at 8.30. I remember it was the second half for you. Access is sponsored by Mark Tyre. Is Verhoeven missed the front end. And the Miners now will defend, leading by five. Terrell Brown with it now to Queen. Queen drives into the lane. Nice pass That's there to pass. Yvonne. Reverse layup is good. What a oh, pass by a Queen. That's the kind of stuff First I was talking about with Trev yesterday. He, he just does it all. Yeah, they say he is a possible does absolutely pro. everything. Six about. minutes to play in the half. The Miners up by He's really three. good at stealing the ball. He's good Lathan at getting blocks. He's good at perimeter Edwards. defense. It on offense, I mean, he scores at all three levels from the three-point line, from the mid-range, down low. He can pass the ball. Villa stops, bounces in low, left of the lane. So well rounded. Verhoeven pivots. They double team him. He throws it right side to Boom, who's got an open three and missed it. It went in and came out. Rebound, Boom. Boom out front. So yeah, the Miners Boom get an offensive be rebound. That rebound right there. All right, here's Lathan at midcourt. Five and a half to play till halftime. Lathan around a double pick out front comes left side into the lane for the leaner and it bounces around. The that's exactly what I remember from the game. Oh, is this guy's mid range was just on point this game. Lathan's got six. I gotta be honest, I don't watch again, all the film on YouTube, 17. obviously, because I don't cover them. Right side, here's Bobbitt. So I really, I'm basing it off of like the two Bobbitt, games that they Bobbitt, played in Mexico Williams, State Williams, and then a couple Williams, other ones this year. From what I saw, Lathan just his mid range is ridiculous. Uh, Cameron Montano, he says, all of the junior college players we got this year, who do you think will play more? So the ones with CJ Roberts, Kaylin Williams, and I guess if you want to count uh, Jason King, who's now eligible, even though he didn't come in this year. But, um, that's a good question. I think I'm probably going to go with CJ Roberts. I think he's... Um, Queen out the Brown I think he has a really Bobbitt. similar game Bobbitt to Evan. Lane, a little bit more bounce to him, and I think he'll probably be the backup Number point guard. It's going to be open between him and Kalen. But personally, I, I like CJ a little bit better. I think Kalen Williams' his shot is just a little too slow, man. He has a really unorthodox release. I think at D1, people are going to close out on him a lot. Harder, it's going to be very hard for him to uh, to get that shot off. He already wasn't shooting very good three-point percentages. Plus, he's younger, so I kind of feel like um, they're just going to kind of have him take a backseat role and learn as much as he can from Evan and from CJ. So my guess would be CJ Roberts would have the biggest impact. And one dunk. That's a good question. What a strong move the hole by Queen. And I can't well, tell you how impressed I am with yeah. this game. That's why they say he's an NBA guy. Cause yeah, Trev's different. Off two feet. Trev is different. He's a jump man. stop, Tyson. He just takes off two feet, dunks it on everybody. Darryl Edwards. But yeah, Cameron, let me know who you think will have the biggest impact. I'm interested in mine. Because honestly, I don't think there's a wrong answer. I think Kalen would still get a pretty good role. Look at this. I don't remember that. I don't remember that, honestly. Um, yeah, I think Kalen will get, will get a decent role on the squad. Um, even when it, like, even when it, AJ was back, they still found minutes for both AJ Harris, um, Evan Gillard, and Sean Buchanan. So they don't have a problem with finding minutes for guys that they can play. And I think Kalen Williams can play. Aggies can retake the lead with four minutes to play in the half. All right, here's Brown with it. Right corner, Sean Williams shoots, That's misses a, shoot. a three, and a rebound foul is going to go against money maker Williams. right there. Just didn't drop. And it's going to go against... I'm just going to see where he goes. Now that he's uh, in the transfer quarter right, right now. Terrell Brown will inbound. Brown, can he get it in? Can he get it in? Yes. Boy, that was a long yes. five. It was a five. Five, five. wow. Got it. Right Denying the inbound. Yeah, um, that's it, They're denying everything. At first, my initial that thought was just that Sean transferred because, you know, he's looking for a bigger role for his senior year. 
But um, you told me it was just to move closer to family, so, so I don't necessarily think he's going to just prioritize having a big role wherever he goes. I'd imagine he's prioritizing winning. But uh, we'll see where he ends up. Three out, three by Latham. Yeah, he was... He was on one in this game. He was feeling it. Daryl Edwards. How many inches is he giving up on Queen? It's a really talented player right there. Leans in, banks it up, and he missed it. And the rebound taken by Queen. Queen now to Bobbin, and he throws it away and out of bounds. Sloppy. Sloppy. Yeah, I think this game was a real wake-up call for the Aggies because you know they're coming off a game against Western New Mexico to kick off the season. Which, no offense to Western New Mexico, but. They're NAI, they're an NAIA squad. It's not the same level of competition. Um, I think UTEP really got their attention and kind of woke them up a bit after this one. And again, this wasn't a team at full strength, so you got to factor that in too for New Mexico State. No AJ Harris, no Clayton Henry, Terrell Brown's playing hobbled at like 50% probably. Cameron says, you're right, I agree with CJ Roberts, he's the only true backup point guard on the Aggie roster. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking too. Really, really similar game to Evan, more than I watched film on him. Uh, former four-star recruit. Brown and the Aggies down seven. Brown. And he's got right plenty of potential. C.J. Bobbitt. Bobbitt holds it. Bobbitt comes around a pick by McNair. Bobbitt comes down the middle. Bobbitt all the way throws one off the window and missed it. And F.E.O.D.G. clears it. With that being said, though, I think if, if Kalen does um, get a quicker release in his arsenal, I think his game is really smooth. Like, I really like him as a long-term prospect for the Aggies if he stays until he graduates. He's, he's just going to be coming in as a sophomore. He's got three years of eligibility left. Um, so I really think he can be a good, a good piece for them. Especially when you consider by the time he is a, uh, a junior or a senior, like he's going to be a really young point guard on the team from the ones that are currently here. So, so yeah, I'd imagine he'll, just, he'll take a bit of a backseat there this year. But. He's a good prospect. Boom comes around an ODG pick down the middle, right corner, pump face, Villa. Now he's going to shoot a three. It's Ooh. short. And the rebound is going to say, if he's Brown. making that, 45 seconds to play in a half. That's tough. Terrell Brown left side. Terrell Brown all the way. Terrell That's a good Brown layup scores. by Terrell Brown. Like I said, just got see performance coming out there and playing Terrell not a full Brown strength. Five. You can see that speed We've isn't quite there. Sure not really following through on his release as much down because down that corn really affects how you elevate. Exactly there's a lot of elevation on his shot, but yeah. the team needed him, so he came out and he played. He had a good game this game. It wasn't bad. Maybe that's why you shot poorly. That sort of thing bothered you. Let me see what Terrell's stats were from this game. Come on, two possessions. Fix the net. All right, here comes Lathan with the Miners up five. All right, now to boom. Four Less for 11, 10 points. Pass off the hand of Six turnovers was a real Buchanan. problem, but... but... I mean, I think when you consider the circumstances, the it was... It was an horrible outside of the turnovers. The shooting right, here's Terrell Brown with it. Terrell Brown, one-on-one -on -one with Latham. Ten seconds left. Aggies down by five. Last Terrell chance Brown here. Pull up. The of the key, puts up the jumper, oh, got it. Right it. I don't remember that. Falls in. One second left. <laughs> you see, this is a long time ago. I don't remember some of these shots. 28 to 25 at halftime. They were in it. They were in it. I think UTEP came out and punched him in the mouth at the side of the second half, though, I think. I think that would be pretty quick. Aggies with a throw in. Second half is underway. Attacking the goal to your left. The Miners, the goal to your right. In front of their benches. Right side, Queen. Queen comes corner of the key. 
Bounces out front to Bobbitt, back to Queen. Queen head of the key. You Queen can see, stops, like, bounces left side to McKenzie. Utep was right locked in on Queen. Scores. What a beautiful they had a double team Queen right there. Amazing. McKenzie they were pretty much seven. saying, if one someone they're already going to do this, it's going to be someone other than Trev. Here comes Lathan right side, forecourt, out top to Williams. Williams, a one-bounce dribble, now to Boom. Nearly stolen by Brown. Villa, in low to Bryson Williams, lost it, gets it back. Bryson wow. Williams spins baseline, spins again, scoops one up, and it doesn't go. This is there. That and it's taken by Bob as the Aggies can take the lead. Gets it where he wants to, and I want to say Brown he's, with it a pick he's by what, McCann entering his senior year? Brown on right wing now to Buchanan. Buchanan comes head of the key, left side Bobbitt into the corner to Brown. Brown on the wing, comes around the middle and steps out of bounds. Oh, out of bounds. Oh, right. Two Two right. 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 Literally forcing him out of bounds. Dribbling up the sideline. Aggies with their eighth turnover. And it yeah, you said just looked a lot more aggressive this game. Miners up one. They've led by as many as seven. I mean, they had that losing streak right against the Aggies. Side. You can tell they just wanted this one a little more. Boom comes around a pick by Villa. Had the home court Villa advantage and everything. Villa bounces right of the lane. Williams comes into the lane. Missed the left-handed hook shot. And it's taken by McCants. Now to Brown. Brown front court right side. Minute and a half into the second. Brown right baseline. Cut off by Villa. And stepped out of bounds again. Oh, along the baseline. Line. So there's two of his six turnovers just like again, that. Though, Eric Villa. Beat him to a spot. It's the D. Is yeah. Cameron says, how many episodes, how many episodes of straight shooter are you going to do? Um, it's probably going to come out to around 20, because I'm doing, the hope is that everybody, can be everybody on the team. So, but that also includes guys coming in and coming out. So, it'll still, like, I already interviewed Terrell, hopefully I'll get around to, or I will get around to Yvonne, to CJ, to Trev, uh, Sean Cannon, to a couple other guys, so. Yeah, the hope is to get around to everybody this offseason. And if it's about 20 episodes, one per week, that's what, five months worth of stuff? So I'm really trying to spread it out so that way we can have content the whole offseason. Because I really don't want it to just be like, alright, the season's over, I'll see you guys once the next season starts, you know what I mean? Like, I really want to have content throughout the whole year. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, especially once high school football starts, because I do cover high school football also. So that's going to be my top priority in terms of... Probably putting out the three, four Korea, articles a week on high school football. But I'm still going to find time to put out another one or two in the Mexico State like basketball Canada. articles, uh, the straight the shooter episodes, stuff like Not that. Because uh, I know is their best uh, you guys want the year round coverage, so I'm going to try to do that as best as I can. Two NCAA tournament teams, right side Terrell Brown. So we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Back back Wrapped up episode five. Which is bar which will come out tomorrow. Buchanan out front now to Bobbitt. Comes left side. Bobbitt through the key. Bobbitt with two, with one. A three pointer by Brown is blocked by yeah, Lee. Yeah, kind of put that up there. See, Jan's not happy there. What hustle? He's 10 steps away with three seconds to go on the clock, and he hustles out there and gets a piece of it. God, you gotta like him. All right, here yeah. come the Miners. Just and not it's good clock management. Sule Boom with it out front against Brown. Boom comes around to Bryson Williams' pick. Stops now to Villa out top. Villa to the dribble. Still a three-point game, side. though. Eric Villa stops. Bryce is left side of the lane. Bryce and Williams. I feel like they were just playing Williams just, just one step behind the whole game. It wasn't a lot. Like they weren't going to blow him out. Takes the charge and Bryce and Williams just one step behind the whole game. number 11, Bryce and Williams. Bryce just third starts goal. to get dominant in the paint. Got the two free throws. He's got his third now. See if Terry keeps him in the game. All right, here comes Sean Buchanan up the floor for New Mexico State. Like I was saying, State. hopefully NBA next week we'll have uh, William McNair on straight Brown. shooter. That's who's bar nominated. Right we'll see if we can make it happen. Let me, let me see this really quick. 36 or 30. Come Sean Buchanan up the floor for New Mexico I'm trying to see how many guys from New Mexico State actually got back here top. on this run. Now to Terrell Brown. Like, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about this hustle. Boom right side, Lathan. 
UTEP had four guys back there, man. They, they were all over the place. The the These guys just did not run out of gas. Bobbitt with it, now to Buchanan, around a pick by McCants, left side Bobbitt. Bobbitt lobs in low, McCants, Johnny he's ball right down the basket, low. he missed the layup, but a Ooh. foul. If it's Bryson, that's four. Now Bryson was nowhere near him, because he didn't want to pick up on number two, Jordan Lathan. Where's for Johnny? Jordan Lathan has second foul. Second foul. Second foul. Number 32. Like I said, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Hope everybody's staying safe. I see we got five people on here live, but even if you guys are watching this back later, I appreciate y'all for watching it. If you can give this so a like, I'd really appreciate it also. Baseline. Just helps the channel grow. And it comes in right we're still trying to get this off of its feet right now. We're about a month into it. Trev, nice now little sidestep. Really got it. it. He is so smooth. Yeah, such a smooth game. Has 12. Miner's lead is 2 at 32-30. Length in an attacking zone. Lathan shovels out front to ODG. ODG a one bounce dribble now to Edwards. Edwards comes left side, crosses over, comes right side of the lane, all the way to the rack, off the window. Dude, it's tough there. You got Trev on him. Darrell Edwards with a savvy move. He's got I mean, there's a reason why he came over from LSU. There's a reason four. why he was right even able to get a scholarship Bobbin from LSU. 34 to 30, Bobbin out front to Really good finish right there. Really good three point shooter, Darrell too. Brown. Round of pick by McCants, right side Queen. Queen nearly double dribbled. Bounces right corner to Bobbitt. Bobbitt baseline. Bobbitt spins. Bobbitt under the basket. Bobbitt lost it. It's out of bounds. Tough. The liner. Great team. The liner. Tough, man. Timeout on the floor. The two Steves will have it for you starting at 6.30 here on 6.30. Yeah, you tell us where you're going in this one. Look forward to it, Steve. All right, here's Jordan Lathan in attacking zone. Miners up by four. Out front ODG. ODG. Middle to Edwards, left side Villa. Villa left to the lane, ODG. ODG comes into the lane. Nice pass into Villa, and he's still up for two. Villa goes to double Effie, and what does Eric do? Cuts to the basket. That's Villa. a cerebral player with five. Effie the assist. Yeah, Miners that was a really smart cut to the basket. Lead seven. McCants with it, now to Buchanan. Out top, left side, Sean Williams. Yvonne comes for it. Haven't seen too much from him this game. I don't know what his stats were. Now to Buchanan. Buchanan into the lane. Buchanan throws one up. Foul. He'll it's go good to take. the line. Good controlled dribble drive by Buchanan. Yeah, that's and a good aggressive Bowman take by Shane. And Sule Boom is his first foul of the game. It is foul the third Sule Boom. team foul. First personal foul. Two shots for Sean Buchanan who has yet to score. Buchanan scores. has a lie. Not shooting in two. Oufre. Of this game yet, so he's just not into it. Didn't have the feel. You can't admit this first. I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter, yeah, but they had um, the game, four, number two, I don't want to miss Riley anybody, Riley. but I think it was Sean Buchanan, Tennessee five, Owens, no, Brian Rice, 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 Clay Rice, Henry, Wilfred Lakai, the right guys at the line, Sean. Um, Coach Anwar, Coach best. Jansh, Coach Owens. Next one is good. I say Jabari. There were a lot of guys from New Mexico State that were out uh, peacefully pressure. protesting. Minor I believe on campus five. yesterday. Um, I talked a little bit about it yesterday during the live stream, saying that they were planning on doing it, but we saw some photos on Twitter and stuff like that of them doing that. So again, shout out to them. Like I said, I just I love when athletes are restricted to, to just the sport they play, you know, while they actually use their platform to, to uh, for the right causes. So. Yeah, major Cannon props to all of them for going out and doing that yesterday. Dribble, right side, treble and queen. Queen crosses over, comes baseline through the That's key, left corner. Pass. Now it comes to Rice, out yeah. top Buchanan and low to Yvonne. He's right under the basket. Did he walk with it? No. Does he miss? Yes. Rebound tipped by ODG, taken by Boom. Three on two the other way. Left side, Edwards for the pull-up three. He mm. missed it. Rebound knocked away and out of bounds by Buchanan. It should go to the minors. Uh, Cameron and says, who do you think has the best chance to make the NBA for the Aggies now that Trev left? That's a good question. I mean, I'm leaning towards Jabari just because he's the youngest of the two. I think Jabari and Johnny really stand out to me. Um, so I'm leaning towards Jabari just because, you know, he still has another year on top of that. On top of Johnny, since Johnny's a senior and Jabari's a junior. 
Lathan Lathan right side. Side. Whoops, it left like, both of them, I think, have the talent the for it. I think Johnny is a really underrated guy. Three. Especially if he gets that three point shot to be even more consistent this upcoming season. Not that it wasn't this year, he was already one of the best three point shooters on the team. At six foot seven, uh, it's a little bit of a tough spot. He's a bit of an in betweener. But uh, I think it all, I don't kind of lies on whether he can hit that three ball consistently or not. And then for Jabari, six foot four, like I think he could play the point guard spot if he wanted to in the league. Like he could play the point guard spot at six foot four. He's a really aggressive defender. Adding weight is going to be the, the biggest thing for him. I think. But it's, to his credit, he has been working on it a lot stronger this past off season. But I think if we're talking about being in the NBA, right he still has to add some more strength to him, some more muscle. But other than that, he's right a good two-way player, Yvonne. can pass it, can score. Uh, I think both of them are, are um, legitimate prospects. Such a smart defensive player, to not the strongest guy. Steven M says Johnny. Yeah, Johnny comes to mind for sure. Clayton Henry. That's true. Clayton Henry also. Says Tyler Hoffman. Clayton Henry, I think, um, is really going to surprise a lot of people this year. I've, I've been kind of saying it whenever I talk about whether I think he would come back or not is before we found out. But personally, I feel like it's not a shot at age or anything like that. But if I had to pick between one or the other, which one would be more impactful should they come back? I, I'm picking Clayton to be a little bit more impactful just because they need somebody at that wing spot. It's really a bonus for the Aggies backcourt if they get AJ Harris. Uh, don't get me wrong, if they get AJ Harris, that is a major game changer. But I think Clayton's role on the team, because they don't have a lot of wing depth, like he's going to be so important for this year. They're going to use him at positions two through four. He's going to be what I think is their best defender on the team. Um, good three point shooter as well. Efficient shooter, he's not going to be someone that needs the ball on his hands. Like, he's going to be really good for him. Lathan right side, Villa. Villa comes to the dribble. Villa comes into the corner, bounces in low. Effie, Effie attacks the window. Foul. Queen, the two-shot foul. Wow. That's huge. That could be Queen's third. Tyson. Call number it 21. Queen's third as Queen. he reached in. That's got Effie's second. Uh, Tyler asks, uh, shout out for tuning in, by the way, Tyler. I, I don't think I recognize your name yet. I'm looking at um, if Clayton didn't get injured in the fall, he would have started over Trey, I think, all season. That's what James is telling me that um, he felt as if Clayton could have been the best player on their team last season. He said he would have put him up there with Trey. I think personally that probably would have found a spot for him. Um, my guess is that they might have put them both in the game and kind of had Clayton as a small ball at the four spot, which they had done a little bit of the year prior. So maybe Johnny coming off the bench, at least in the start of the season, because Johnny already was coming off the bench in the start of the season. Um, now once Johnny starts started to play well, like how he did um, right around the end of non-conference play, I think then maybe we got to move some pieces around. But I probably, I think if we had started the season with everybody healthy last year, it probably would have been Clayton after Four spot. But yeah, definitely, like, he, he's good enough to be in that starting line without a doubt. Stephen M., what part of Clayton's game did he improve upon? He got a lot stronger, um, which just made him a much better defender. Because he was having to go and play at the four spot, I think he had his struggles at times um, in junior season since he wasn't as strong, but he definitely put on a lot more weight. Um, from what I've seen, or from what I've been told, his three-point shot has gotten a lot more consistent in practice as well. Obviously, we didn't get to see a whole lot of that since he only played one game against Northern New Mexico, but he had really worked on that three-point shot. Uh, just became a really solid 3 and D player. Sean Williams on the other end, not feeling as well. All great players. comes in right side, ODG. Both of these teams are going to defend. Lathan with it now to Villa in low to Effie. He's right under the basket. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Clayton does this year. 
I think you can make an all-whack defensive team, or the all-whack defensive team, since he's only one. First field goal for Effie. He's got five. Miners by eight. It's their biggest lead, 42-34. I don't really see him putting up crazy enough stats offensively to make an all-whack first or second team, but, I mean, you never know. But I, I would say his best bet would be the defensive team. I think he's definitely capable of that. For number 55, Sean Williams. Williams on the bench and Treble and Queen is back on the floor. Well, three fouls. Trev's got three. Miners need to attack him. Comes in right side to McCants. Now to Jabari Rice. Rice at midcourt to Terrell Brown. <laughs> Little bit of camera problems there. Brown down the middle all the way to the rack. Scoops one up and it's goaltended by the Aggies. They See, I'll tell you what happened right there. Exactly, anyway. for those who don't know, um, way. Looks when I went to school at UT Austin, I was actually part of the film team yes, for uh, Texas Longhorns football. So I, I would film all of their practices. Well. I would travel all out of state for all of their games and stuff like that. And so I would be there with the cameras and everything. What just happened right there is the dude got a little lazy. He was probably on his phone or something like that. And what you do is you just tighten the camera so it stays on that one frame because it was an inbounds. And then he, he saw that they ended out of the ball and were starting to move. He was like, oh, shoot. And had to move. So that's why he saw that little, uh, that little frenzied nudge right there. Yeah, I was on the film crew for, for three years over there. So it was a lot of fun. One of my, uh, it was one of my three jobs in college and I at the same time. So I was, I was very busy in college. Tyler says Johnny was injured going into his sophomore year, so Clayton played the four. Then Johnny came back and Clayton hurt his ankle against UM for both. So I think it really hurt both of them. Yeah, they, they both were dealing with injuries. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if Clayton been, had been healthy all of last season, the Aggies would have had a good problem on their hand where they just didn't know who to start. I don't even go wrong with Johnny or Clayton. The only reason why I would say Clayton is just because I think if you're looking for more of a scoring punch off the bench, I'm leaning towards getting Johnny in there in the second unit as opposed to Clayton. But, but yeah, they're both really good. Bryson turns, shoots, and it bounces twice on the iron, misses, taken by Treble and Steven says, can you turn off the audio of the game? It's hard to hear your comments. Okay, I just turned it down. Let me know if you can hear me better. Oh, that's on me. Let's see, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Tell me if it's by something to lower it. Yeah, my bad, guys. I'm trying to figure out this whole setup still. Inside the block charge, Mark was he. Miners will throw it into the right of the goal baseline, leading by 11. 11 point game here, so they started to pull away already. Here comes I forget what the final score of this was. I don't remember if it was double digits or not. I know the Aggies cut it down to like around six points late in the game. But I don't know if we got back up to double digits or not. I don't remember. But yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up, Stephen. I would hate to go back and just find that y'all can't even hear what I'm saying the whole hour and a half that I'm here. Yeah, maybe a little bit of acting by Bryson Williams there. Just a little bit. <laughs> That's a big dude. That's a kind of hard guy to, to knock down. Uh, Steven says better. Cool. Uh, we prefer to hear your comments rather than the UTEP play-by-play crew. -play I appreciate that. <laughs> Thirteen point game. Yeah, they really pulled away at this point. I mean, I, I was there at the game, and you kind of just got the sense the whole night that it was it was UTEP's game to lose. They were the home squad. They were motivated to end the streak. 
New Mexico State had its injuries it was dealing with. It was a really tough spot for the Aggies. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Aggies didn't play great. Like, you can't just blame it on the injuries. I think the article that I wrote, the headline was that uh, poor play, not just injuries, leads to Aggies' loss to UTEP or something like that. Like, they had a lot of turnovers. They shot the three ball horribly this game. But I think it's good to get that kind of game out of the way early in the season. Like, I really think this was a wake-up call for them. Kind of the, yeah, you guys are dealing with injuries, but nobody's nobody's going to sit around and feel sorry for you guys. Like, UTEP is going to take advantage and take it to them, which they did in this game. I think every team needs a couple games like this in the season. Just to kind of make you refocus and reprioritize prioritize things, you know. And it's either it's either going to bring the team closer or it's going to bring the team apart. And I think New Mexico State really rallied around each other. Like by the end of the season, not that they weren't close at the start of the season, but by the end of the season, they just kept talking about how, like, man, we went through so much together this year, and it just brought them so much closer. And, like, games like this are a part of that. Like, it's a part of that process. <laughs> what was that by Epic? Was he trying to say Will's out here throwing elbows or something? <laughs> he did like the little. That was funny. I would love, like, you see it in the NBA, but I would love to see some of these college basketball games with players mic'd up. I always find that so interesting when I get to see like NBA players mic'd up. I would love to see what or hear what ODG was saying in that instance. Ridiculously tough shot. 13 points for him. Yeah. He had himself a ball game in this one. Him and Bryson, I think, were the two top scorers. I want to say, because those are the guys that came out and got interviewed afterwards. Bari driving, good kick out. Oh, he got the foul, okay. The UTEP student section in the back there has like fat heads of, of Selena Gomez and Dwight from The Office. I think I saw Beyonce also. That's funny. Is that Will Smith and Mr. Bean, I think? <laughs> That's funny, man. That's one of the things I, I sort of regret about college is that I really never, I think I only attended like two or three games, just sporting events in general while I was in college because I was always out covering games. So I never got to actually go and be in the student section and stuff. So that, that kind of sucked. But, but I, I did enjoy covering games, though, for UT. Because obviously a lot of good players go through there for football, for basketball, all that kind of stuff. I covered women's basketball for a while, too. And there's a couple people I covered there in the league now. Like Ariel, Ariel Atkins, who's on the... Uh, 
the uh, Mystics, who just won the championship. So, I guess there was pros and cons to it. Well, pull up for Jabari, got it. That's a tough shot. That's a tough shot because he was cutting. And I guess Johnny passed it a little bit too early, and so he had to just kind of catch it and lob it over Villa. And second violation. Yeah, that's when the Aggies are at their best, when they're running either a full court press or a half court. They're just able to force so many turnovers. Like they, they run that half court or full court press as well as anybody in the WAC for sure. Better than anybody in the WAC actually. And one, I remember that. Okay, that's the play I remembered where they, where you're like, okay, are they gonna come back or maybe? Because I think Johnny makes this and it gets cut down to, to a seven point game. And I think that's what I was talking about when I said they, they cut it down to six or seven. You see, this is where I pretty much have my article written up saying UTEP's going to win. Unless I have to, like, make a change late. And this is where I'm like, oh, no, am I going to have to rewrite this article? <laughs> like, okay, he didn't miss this one. Because that happens sometimes. If a team makes, like, a late push, and you, you already written your article, because, I, like I said, I have to get these articles out literally five minutes after the game's over. I have to send it in the print. So as much as I don't like writing that a team has already lost before it's over, like it's just I have to do it in order to make print in time. So yeah, I'm pretty sure at this point I'd already said the Aggies had lost. Tough. Tough, man. Look at this by Trev, dude. Look at his second jump by Trev. To be able to elevate again so quickly after this missed shot. And get that in. Man, that is tough. That's so tough. I, I'm still thinking he's going to get drafted in the second round. Just the more that I watch him, the more I look at like mock drafts and stuff like that, I still think he's going to get drafted, even with the injuries and stuff like that and the age. He just he does it all. He really does. And of course, he's somebody that you root for, like. From every time I've personally talked to him, he's the most polite guy, probably on the team, honestly. Um, so he actually does this thing where after all the interviews, so like let's say after a game's over on the road, like after this one, we went out and we interviewed him uh, right outside the locker room. And so he'll come out and we'll have like the KTSM guys there, we'll have a couple other TV guys, we'll have myself. So it'll be like, Trevor will be standing here and they'll be like, cameras and me all all around him as soon as the interview's over he's like appreciate y'all he'll make sure to like fist bump or dap you up for like every single guy there like he makes sure to let you guys know that he just appreciates the work that we do and stuff like that super polite guy obviously coming from the juco schools um you just root for guys like that man Yeah, that was a really smart move to draw that foul. This free throw is good. I'm going to start looking up um, 
the article for this story because I think what I'm going to do after all of these games is read off the quotes that we got from the team. So that way you guys can just hear, you know, what the team was saying afterwards and stuff like that. So I'll have that pulled up. I want to say we talked to... We talked to Jans for sure because we did that for every game. But I think... I think Trev was the guy we talked to after this game. I want to say. But I honestly don't remember it was so long ago. It's a good offensive call. Offensive charge. Um, it looks like this game we only talked to Jans. That's what I'm seeing here. I guess I'm remembering wrong. Yeah, I think they only talked. Yeah, they only talked to Jans on this one. Which I have some quotes that I can pull up afterwards. Then we'll look at it. We'll look at the stats and everything once this is over. Got about three and a half minutes left though. Uh. Dota Pants. Appreciate you for tuning in, man. That's a new name. He says, this was a tough game to watch then, and it still is now. Yeah. I mean, that's... I was kind of thinking about that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how many people are going to want to tune in for the games that they lost. But, I mean, we're going back and we're watching every single game. So, you know, we're going to have a couple like these, especially early in the season. As you guys know, they started off um, not the best because of all the injuries. So... Hey, we're watching the best games and the worst games, unfortunately. But, but I mean, hey, I still think it's good to go back and, you know, break down some film, stuff like that. It's the closest thing we can get to Aggie basketball right now. But, yeah, I appreciate you tuning in. Despite, despite how hard it is to watch. Good pass. That's definitely not a foul. That is a jump ball. That's a jump ball. Yeah. I'm hearing the, the announcers. I don't know if y'all can hear them, but they're like, wow, that was a foul. That's a jump ball, man. I said it a little bit earlier. I'm not trying to put him on blast, but Bryson's falling to the ground a little bit too easily. Trying to get the foul call there. Uh, Tobias Rodriguez, appreciate you tuning in, my man. He says, UTEP deserved to win this game. We didn't play good at all. Yeah, like I said, my headline for this story was uh, four play, not just injuries, leads to loss against minors or something like that. At the end of the day, they missed too many shots from three specifically. They turned the ball over way too much. They just got dominated down low specifically. Like Bryson Williams was a problem. You know? And like I said, I think games like this are important, especially early in the season. Kind of just serve as a wake-up call, and you know it's either going to bring the teams closer together or bring them or like pull them apart. And I think New Mexico State really rallied behind losses like this, and it really just motivated them. Ten-point game. I do. What I do really like though is you can see the Aggies are still fighting here late in the game, forcing these turnovers. Because like at this point, if you're if you're Coach Jans, from the coach's perspective, you know you've lost this game up. Like you know already. So really, what you're looking for is you're just looking at which guys are still fighting. You know, those are the guys that are going to get minutes moving forward. 
Yeah, just from what I'm seeing, it looked like everybody was still giving all their effort right now. Sean Williams out there getting on the glass. He's not known for getting those offensive rebounds, but he's hustling. I don't really blame him for these shots. They're kind of just trying to cut into it right now at this point. Yeah, this was one of the few games that I got to travel for. I always look forward to being able to travel, but, you know, with our budget, we don't always get to. I went out to this one, to the UNM game. Anytime it's in-state, I'm going to it. Um, I went to Grand Canyon, Arizona, and then obviously WAC Vegas, but, you know, didn't, we didn't end up covering any games there. And I gotta say, man, the atmosphere there um, for UTEP was actually really crazy. The place was packed too, which I don't know if it's just because it was a rivalry game. I don't know if they're usually packed or not. I'm just basing it off the one experience. But, but yeah, they they put on a good uh, a good crowd there at the Haskins Center. Deep three. Oh, good. Yeah, you kind of just have to hoist it up here. I'm not putting too much weight into it. But that's what I'm talking about, though. That is full court pressure until the final buzzer. Like, like if you're a coach, you, you look for your players to be doing stuff like that. Maybe not fouling, but at least, you know, hustling. When obviously you've lost the game already. Yeah, so once this is over, I'll just go through the stats, go through the quotes that we got. We only talked to Jans after the game for this one, no players. But we'll take a look at all that kind of stuff and then we'll get out of here. Corner pocket. No good. And, um, ooh, got it. And you see, that's all because Sean Buchanan's hustling again, that offensive board. The shortest guy on the court. That's hustle. That's absolute hustle there. Johnny diving on the deck, man. You love to see that kind of stuff. And I think that really speaks to the system that Jans has built there, you know? To the playing style that he's built there. Now, granted, in the moment right now, Jans isn't, he doesn't care about it, you know? But I think later on when he's going back and watching the film, he's, he's liking the way his team is hustling. But right now, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's pissed right now. Just that they're losing this game. I will also say, though, that even on games like this, when they lose, um, there are some coaches that are just waiting to take it out on the media afterwards in press conferences. Like, you're a little bit on edge when you're interviewing a player or a coach after... Um, after a loss, but to James's credit, he, he's really professional. Like he doesn't take it out on us. He answers. He answers everything that you ask him. All the players are the same. So like I appreciate that for sure as a journalist. There it is, though, folks. UTEP 65, New Mexico State 50. As you guys know, the Aggies did go and. Um, win the next meetup so we'll get to see that eventually later down the line but up tomorrow is going to be a game against Southern I believe let me go ahead and make sure that's correct I think that's the next game on the schedule here is a game against Southern which was back at the Pan American Center yeah game against Southern so that'll be tomorrow night at 6pm Mountain Time we'll go back and we'll watch that whole game from start to finish so make sure to check that out if you guys missed any of this and you want to go back and watch this, 
it's going to be immediately available on our YouTube channel, but it's just not going to pop up right away on like our videos if you go to uploads. There's going to be a little drop uh, drop box right next to uploads. And you click on that, and you can go to live streams, and that's where it'll pop up. Um, if you're trying to watch it within the first 24 hours of the stream ending, after 24 hours, it'll just become a regular upload, and you can find it easily. But yeah, you guys can find it that way if you want to go back and watch this. I appreciate everybody who's watching this live with me. I love answering questions and just talking with you guys in general. Um, to me, that's what makes this fun, because if not, I'm sitting here for an hour and a half just talking to myself. So thank you to y'all. Big shout out. And big shout out to those who are just going back and watching this, even if you didn't have time to watch it live. Uh, let's take a quick look at the stats for this game just so we can see how this went down. Let's see, the leading score was Treble and Queen, 21 points on 9 for 16 shooting, 7 boards, 4 assists. Yeah, he was, he was the guy the whole game. You could tell UTEP was double teaming them from the start. And he was still finding ways to score. He's a bucket. Uh, let's see. We got Terrell Brown, like I said, with 10 points on 4 for 11 shooting. 6 turnovers. Uh, 7 rebounds. But still impressive just for him to be out there even when he had the strain groin. And then those were the only two double-digit scores. Johnny McCann said 9. Uh, Yvonne had a really quiet game. Only 4 points and 5 boards. Uh, let's see. Bryson Williams, 19 points. For the minors and Jordan Lathan with 13 points. The, the minors had 34 points in the paint compared to 28 for NM State. And yeah, that's about it for that one. Let's take a quick look at the quotes. Hear what Chris Jans had to say about the contest. I'm going to pull that up right now. He says, quote, they thoroughly outplayed us, took us to the woodshed. They deserve to win. Uh, we struggled on both ends. Their size on the perimeter didn't allow us to catch the ball where we wanted. Their size and length gave us trouble. That was a wake-up call for sure. So like I was saying, I really think this game was a wake-up call for them. Um, and I believe that's all that we have. I believe that's all we have from Jans on this one. So... Oh, he also said, we're not very good right now. I was afraid of that. Yeah, like I said, they were dealing with injuries. That definitely factors into it. Uh, but at the end of the day, just not the best performance. Tobias says, thank you, even though I turn, I tuned in the last few minutes. Hey, even if you could only tune in for a second, I appreciate you doing that, man. Um, you've been tuning in for all of the stuff so far, so thank you so much. But I think that's going to do it for us tonight, guys. Like I said, we're back at it tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. That's where we're going to be watching New Mexico State versus Southern at the Pan American Center. And it will actually be a game that the Aggies won. Spoiler alert. So it'll be a lot more fun to watch that one. Um, also releasing tomorrow is episode number five of Stray Shooter, which is going to be an interview with Jabari Rice. It's about 20 minutes long, maybe a little bit less. We just break down game film. We answer fan questions. And we do a bunch of other really hilarious stuff. So guys, make sure to check that out. Like this video, please. Subscribe, turn on post notifications so you can be notified every time that we do these live streams or when the Stray Shooter episodes get released Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, I believe that's all that I have to plug. Oh, we posted, we published an interview with Nick Gonzalez that I did the other day just talking about his draft prospects as he's getting ready for the MLB draft, which is going to be on the 10th. I think that's next Wednesday. Um, so there's a video of that. It's about three minutes long here on our YouTube channel. So make sure to check that out. And if you want to actually read more about some possible landing spots for him, you know, how he fits with teams um, that are interested in him, stuff like that, that's going to be on our site. It's already up there on lcsunnews.com. Make sure to check that out if you guys could subscribe to the paper. We are trying our best, not just sports, but news, politics, everything. We have a really great staff right now that's putting out a bunch of content for you guys to check out right now. So please support local journalism. Above all else, I hope everybody is staying safe right now, both with the pandemic and just with the way that the country is going right now. Hopefully everybody's staying safe, guys. This has been Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jay the Sports Dude, and I'm out of here.